For journalists, Mogadishu is one of the most difficult and dangerous places to work in the world. Armed radical groups, kidnappings, bombings, and corruption. When our reporter Kami went there, she traveled with an escort. And as a woman, she had to wear a headscarf to blend in. Today, Brut is bringing you inside Mogadishu, the capital of Somalia, a country that has been at war for close to 30 years. Things have been even worse there since 2007 with the arrival of Al-Shabaab, a radical group linked to Al-Qaeda. They have between 5,000 and 9,000 members throughout the country. Al-Shabaab's goal is to impose Sharia, Islamic law, and on top of that, they want to overthrow the government, which is already weak and extremely corrupt. And some are taken from age eight, and they're brainwashed. They grow up in this violence and training and training and tra until, until they become like brainless, just like machines for killing. Officially, Al-Shabaab was driven out of the capital in 2011. But in reality, they're still here, everywhere mixed in with the local population. There are people who are wearing uniforms, there are people who are selling shops, there are people who are in the mosques, there are people who are in the uh, restaurants. They are everywhere. Invisible, but everywhere. From the heart of this chaotic city, Brut brings you the daily lives of four Somalis, four women who took huge risks to tell their stories in front of a camera. It could get them killed, and they know it. Somali women are very strong. For 30 years, when men were fighting, when men left, women were looking after the children, taking them to schools, bringing the breadwinners, keeping the family together. Somali women have become very strong and shown the resilience that was needed during these difficult times. Assalamu she had a small business in a area of the Panadir. So when the explosion has happened, they affected on the legs. In Mogadishu, not a week goes by without an attack from Al-Shabaab. The deadliest one in recent months came in December 2019, when more than 70 people were killed, including a bus carrying many students. Rukia is a head nurse. At her hospital alone, every month, more than 2,000 people are treated for injuries from bullets and attacks. We have to deal with that explosion because we are in an emergency situation every day. So when we see that patients coming, you forgot you are about to, you are targeting the patient situation. Here, people who are usually worst enemies can end up in neighboring hospital beds. One, uh, there is an explosion. It's mostly civilian patients are coming. But when there is a fighting, both sides can come in the hospitals. Everybody who is sick like this, whatever, wherever he comes and whoever he is, he is, he has a right to get the treatment. I grew up in here in this situation, yes, and I never get fed up about this situation because I know this uh, situation is uh, from the side of Allah, and Allah, the only one is who can solve the problem is existing in Somalia. Uh, we are very resilient. We have become very resilient. Um, in the beginning, when you hear an explosion or killing, we used to call someone, what happened? I heard an explosion. Somebody died, maybe. Who died? How many died? But not anymore. You will hear a huge explosion, or maybe the house can shake, and you don't bother. You don't call anyone. You just continue what you're doing. So we are used to that now. We use it to cry when somebody dies, but not anymore. We use it to all this. 
you know, uh, accepting the violence. So it's, it's in our system. Do you feel a threat sometimes with the explosion in the city? With the... Yes, there is many explosions and sometimes they happen, but the other time they enjoy uh, uh, the beautiful places of the country, uh, like here. Sometimes, if you say, uh, if you see the other side, uh, it looks like uh, uh, the future would be better than now. Is it a threat sometimes with the explosion and stuff like that? I'm not scared. 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 It's better here. Somalia is better. All the countries. Somalia is better. Come to all. In Mogadishu, there are armed men on every corner and checkpoints every hundred meters. You have to show your credentials constantly. This is where they bring the banana for the day. We do uh, two cars per day, which is like two tons. We deliver it to like over 200 women, which uh, actually you know creates jobs for them because they resell those uh, banana to higher amount of money and, and they make a living for their families. Millions of Somalis have left their home because of violence and instability. Now, some people from that diaspora are coming back to work in the country. Najma is one of them. She's 36 years old, and after 20 years in the U.S., she decided to come back to Somalia to run a company selling fruit. Hey, I went to high school and college in the U.S. I was um, working as a software engineer. I came to Somalia because I wanted uh, to make a change in my life and see what things I can do uh, to improve uh, my skills as well as my country. Do you still talk with your friend in the US? Or? Of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we talk on the weekends or whenever we have time. When they watch my, um, you know, my social media, they're like, wow, I can't believe that's Somalia. You know, they're like shocked. Everybody in the U.S. is, is worried to be, you know, living in Somalia because of the security reasons, uh, because of all the explosions that happen, you know, a lot of the time. Uh, but when I come here, I, I saw how people live, you know, they live a free lifestyle. Nobody's really scared. Um, it's not like the way the media makes it look like that, oh my God, Somalia is not safe. You're gonna die there within like a couple of weeks if you stay there. You see how fast they finish it up? It's empty, so now the, the next one is gonna, they're gonna do this one again. As a woman, it's not really easy uh, to have this big business uh, in Somalia because uh, a lot of the big, you know, companies based in Somalia are owned by men, run by men. But that doesn't mean that uh, as a woman you can't do that. Once you overcome them and once people see that you're capable of doing this kind of job, they're like, oh, you know, they start to respect you more. They start to trust your judgment more. And they actually, you know, come for advice for you more. There's so many young women that, that need role model right now, that need uh, guidance, that, you know, needs a woman they can look up to and say, I want to be like her when I grow up. And so we all inspire to be that woman that is going to be a role model for the next generation. In front of the camera, Najma was optimistic about her work. But when the camera was off, she said she would rather not talk about politics. It could end up getting her targeted by radical groups. No, they don't say that they want to kill you and all that, but they tell you, you are a woman, you cannot be in politics, you are a woman, you cannot be a leader, you are a woman, you cannot stand next to men, you are a woman, all that. This is, with me and the people like me, we face that every day, but we don't listen to that. That doesn't stop us. We go forward. Education will play a huge factor in the future of Somali women. The country has one of the lowest school enrollment rates in the world. Only about a quarter of girls go to school. Halimo is a school principal who's trying to change things. So 
These women have amazing optimism, despite the three decades of war that their country has been through. Some of them are willing to consider a future alongside men and even alongside Al-Shabaab. That's what Fuzia is pushing for. She's one of the few women in Somali politics, and she's a candidate in the next presidential elections. I believe if, if there is a mediator to mediate the Somali people, the government, and the nation as a whole with uh, uh, Shabab. So maybe mediating like the Taliban and, and the Americans and the Taliban and the uh, Afghan government. We need to finish that. These people are humans like us. These people are terrorists, but Somalis. So we can sit with them and ask them what they want. If, if they want to share in the government, I mean, they can get. Anybody with senses will accept that. If that's all they want, if they want power, let them get it and save the people and the future of this country. Mm -hmm. 